Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to one of my favourite types of review, that of a brand new watch from a brand new brand. I think it's always a little bit exciting to see what a brand does with their maiden effort and whether or not they get it right first time. Now the brand today is Holmier, which despite the Nordic sounding name are actually based in uh, Singapore. And in fact, they may be a new brand, but they're not quite flying blind. The brand owner is also the brand owner of Richard Legrand Watches, a brand that I have featured a number of times on the channel in the past, mostly positively, occasionally negatively. So you would think then that that would give Holmier a head start. And well, it kind of does. There are some really nice touches here, including a beautiful dial finish, something I haven't seen elsewhere and that really, really works. But I do have a few moans and niggles, as always. Now you saw the pop-up. This video is sponsored by Holmier. I will therefore, of course, leave a link to their website in the description of the video. You'll also find there a discount code JOMWA22, which takes $30 off the price of one of these. Now the watch normally costs 460 bucks. The voucher therefore takes it down to $430. I think that's a pretty decent saving if you like what you see here. So on that note, let's flip the camera and have a look at it. All right, let's get into it. It's always fun to have a look at a brand new brand, even if as discussed, the owner is by no means a novice. It's fun to see the direction a company takes with its first model, how they brand it, how they pitch it, how they price it, and how they intend to carve out their very own niche in an increasingly saturated market. Now the packaging is a pretty straightforward black cardboard box affair here, but I'm told they will have a fancy metallic warranty card. In fact, here it is. You have to agree that is actually pretty fancy. Two year warranty though, which is what I think should be standard these days. And what about the name Holmier? You know I have a rule that I don't review brands I can't pronounce, so it's just as well I'm fluent in Old Norse, isn't it? Holmier means a small and rounded island, and there are many homes to be found off the coasts of Denmark, Germany, Sweden, and of course, my native Scotland. And the model name Epifera apparently refers to the epipelagic zone, roughly the first 200 meters or so of the ocean depth-wise. So we're definitely starting off with a bit of a maritime theme, and you'll see that pop up again and again over the course of the video, including most obviously, and most strikingly, the dial of the watch. This is undoubtedly one of the most interesting and attractive dials that I've seen all year. An appropriate texture on a dial can add so much to the design of a watch overall, and I've never seen anything quite like this one before. It's a really complex process that goes into the manufacture of this dial, apparently, a combination of brushing, sandblasting, stamping, and then coating to give it that shimmering effect that actually, genuinely, looks quite a lot like the top surface of the ocean. You can see it from these static shots, but you can obviously see it more from these dynamic shots. It's noticeable, but it's still fairly subtle. It's not completely in your face. Now, three of the four color variants feature this dial finish, but if you're not a fan, if you think that's a bit too much, then there's a pastel blue, quite a pale pastel blue, which you may remember was an old Richard Legrand signature color. It doesn't have the patterning, it's just a plain matte finish. I'll come back to the dial a little later on, but for now, let's focus on the dimensions. 40 mil in diameter with 20 mil lug width. They refer to this as a quasi integrated bracelet. And when you look at the watch from this top shot, you can see what they've done. It's a traditional case with 20 mil lugs and a bracelet that fits perfectly with the case, but one that can be removed. I've seen other watches try this with varying degrees of success. You know, you'll never get it to look perfect, but I think the whole mirror is probably the best that I've seen. Anyway, 12.4 mil thickness, including a piece of double dome sapphire. Lug to lug is actually relevant today and it's 46.8 today. And sized up for my seven inch wrist, it weighs in at 156 grams on the supplied bracelet. The top crown operates the internal bezel. It is bi-directional and friction based and features one to 12 numerals. Now this bezel can therefore be used to track a second time zone if you so choose or just left in the normal location to help you read the home time zone. The second crown at the four o'clock is screwed down. It operates the movement. Both crowns are really nice and grippy, by the way, about 6.2 mil each and etched with the whole mirror logo, which is a stylized H. 
Now, the watch does have a rather unusual 150 meters of water resistance, still plenty for a sports watch though. And the case finish is really nice. It's mostly fine brushing, but with a high polished chamfer running all the way around the side profile. So mid case, lugs, and the bottom edge of the case also. And what is rather unusual is there is the distinct nick, a little indent, a divot, where the circular part of the case meets the lugs. Now there are four of these, obviously two on each side. I don't think I've ever seen a case faceted this this way. You can see it again from the top profile, those four little indents. It's a really interesting little point of difference. The bezel is all high polish and houses that double dome sapphire, and we've already had a look at the two crowns. You can see here what I mean about the bracelet integration. If you have a removable bracelet, you're always going to get those two lines, but by continuing the high polish chamfer from the lugs onto the bracelet, they made a pretty good attempt at making it look integrated. And the bracelet is a good looking one, all brushed upper surfaces, but with those high polished chamfers on the edges as noted. It's H-link style, but the center links are more diamond shaped than rectangular, and they also feature high polished outer edges. I've not seen that done before. It almost has that snakeskin look overall, but Holmere actually referenced a turtle, which has a similar look to its shell. And I love the split H logo etched into the butterfly clasp, another nice touch. And the case back is lovely too, that's the Hawksbill Turtle, and you can see the reference there. The shape on the turtle shell are replicated in the centre section of the bracelet, apparently so. It's beautifully done this case back with a number of different finishes, all of them super, super sharp. There is the customary spec sheet etched around the turtle, including a bizarre and unnecessary reference number, all in a font that we'll be featuring in the Moans and Niggles section. And behind that case is yet another nice touch. They've used a Miota 9019. I think this is the first time that I've seen one. It's based on the 9015, of course, but with lower clearance for the hands, allowing them to be installed closer to the dial, allowing for a thinner watch overall. Nice. Identical specs though, 24 joules, hacking and hand winding, unidirectional winding from the rotor, roughly 40 hour power reserve, and a positional variance no greater than plus or minus 30 seconds per day from the factory. Back to the dial and hands then, it reminds me a lot of a Trasca, which is no bad thing really, and clearly takes inspiration from previous RLG compressor style watches. Indices are applied double at 12 singles everywhere else, and they are all multifaceted high polished silver with angled tips and a grooved cut out down the middle, which is filled with loom. The Holmia logo is also applied. It's a nice stylized H that is found in various other locations around the watch. The brand name is printed underneath, as is the rather unnecessary automatic. I still don't know why brands insist on putting that on a watch dial, but there you go. There's a frame around the date complication, which is at the six o'clock, keeping things nice and symmetrical, and the date wheel is color matched. There's a printed minute track beyond the indices, but that's pretty much it. Clearly with that blasted, brushed, and stamp dial, they don't need to go too crazy elsewhere. As such, the hands are pretty simple too, just simple rectangular square cut hands, the hour being marginally wider than the minute, and it's a non-loomed needle second hand, all high polished with that small curved counterbalance. The angled internal bezel is also color matched to the dial, or at least it is in the case of the blue one. Numerals are fairly small and discreet, but they are still usable nonetheless. Clearly the non-pattern dial has a quite different effect overall. It's much cleaner, plainer, and simpler. It's obviously up to you then which of the two looks you prefer. And the loom, I haven't shown you the loom yet. Alson, the brand owner, assures me that this will be improved for production units. It's BGW9 on the hands and on the applied indices. Now, initially it looks okay on this prototype. It's easy to tell the alignment of the watch as well because of the different indices at 12 and six. But when I turn the speed up, you can see it doesn't last long enough. It definitely needs more layers for production units. Now, my wrist is average size, but the articulation of the bracelet is fantastic. So you will have no problem here, even if your wrists are six inches or thereabouts. There is quite a lot of steel here though. The bracelet leaves the case effectively at 25 millimeters and only tapers down to 20 at the clasp. So it looks like a lot of metal. Weight as discussed though is not too bad. It doesn't feel particularly enormous on wrist or anything like that, but it does make the overall wearing experience seem like that of a 42 or something. It both looks and feels 
like a slightly larger watch than it is due to that lack of taper. Maybe that's obvious from these wrist shots and the pocket shot. You know, sizing is so subjective. that This isn't a criticism. It's just the type of observation that I always try and include in a review. If you buy a 40 mil diameter watch, I think you should expect it to wear a certain way. And this one wears slightly large. Have a look here at my Tissot PRX, for example, as a comparison. Now, it tapers down to 18, and you can probably see the difference quite clearly. The Tissot still has plenty of presence, but it has a little more elegance, I think, thanks to those narrow links. All right, the moans and niggle section, which frankly sounds like it started already, doesn't it? If you've made it this far, you're clearly interested in this watch. If you've made it this far, you probably worked out that the watch has a bit of an identity crisis. What have we seen so far? The name. Holmere Epifera, inspired by islands and by the surface of the great oceans. And that lovely dial, designed to replicate the aforementioned surface of the oceans. And a turtle on the back, apparently the inspiration for the mid-links of the bracelet. All valid references, I suppose, and certainly no more tenuous than many other attempts at branding that I've seen. Except, this isn't a dive watch. Now that's three very specific marine references, on a non-dive sports watch. Okay, apparently a dive watch is coming, but it might have made sense to launch that one first. Personally, I think the script chosen for the case back is hideous. It looks like the handwriting of your great aunt Irma on the Christmas card that you get from her every year. Not an appropriate font for use anywhere on a watch, I don't think. Just as well it's on the back. And why give us a watch with a quasi-integrated bracelet that can be removed, but not chuck a leather strap or a rubber strap into the package? For the price they're charging, I think that would have been a good idea, especially as the watch looks great on leather. I think a Tropic would also work really well here. But my biggest issue is with the bracelet and area, where clearly the brand have put in a lot of their creative energies. I would love to have seen an extra mil or two of taper on the bracelet as discussed. It would have helped create a more elegant look to the watch without making it seem dainty or feminine at all, I'm sure. But my biggest issue with the bracelet, and with the whole watch in fact, is the lack of half links. I understand that might have been tricky given the complexity of that turtle shell patterning, but it means that sizing is very much hit or miss. Now, for me personally, I'm either a little bit too tight or much too loose. And please, tell me, what do you do there? Because I still don't know. Dorenzo encountered a similar problem with their DRZ04, and their solution was to offer initially as part of the package and subsequently as an option, a diver's clasp. Now, that might not quite work as well aesthetically, but it at least ensures that users get the perfect fit, something that is by no means guaranteed with the whole mirror. You might get lucky, but equally, you might get unlucky, because you can't try this one in a shop and decide for yourself, can you? So what are we left with then? Well, we're left with a watch that does a number of things very well, and a number of things I haven't seen elsewhere, like the unique dial finish, like the bracelet integration, like those little high polished edges on the mid links, and like the even slimmer movement than normal. But one that ultimately I think needs a few more tweaks, particularly to the bracelet, before it becomes a viable alternative to the two watches I've referenced it against in the video. At 430 USD with the voucher, it's certainly a lot cheaper than either the Tissot or the Dorenzo, but then again, I don't think it's as resolved as either the Tissot or the Dorenzo. Alison tells me they have plans to offer this one on leather straps and rubber straps with fitted end links in the future. Perhaps he'll be able to engineer either some half links or a clasp option at the same time. So there you have it, a fairly solid debut by Holmier, literally solid, it's a fairly chunky thing with that large bracelet, but with some lovely touches, especially the dial finish. I'm excited to see that one used on other models. This one perhaps needs a couple of tweaks though, as the sizing is very much hit or miss at the moment. If you like this style of watch, why not check out reviews of the other two watches that I showed in this video, the Tissot PRX or the Dorenzo DRZ04. Thanks for watching this one. I hope to see you again in a future video.